Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to take a look at two generators from Harbor Freight. We've got the Predator 4375 and the Predator 3500 inverter generator. So we're going to be looking at not only the features and the price of these units, but also how much noise they make what sort of run times they have, and what sort of equipment you can reasonably expect to run from it. Now as part of that, I've brought a few power tools out. I've got a table saw, I've got a circular saw, I have a miter saw, and I have a uh, welder. So I've already tested this with my air conditioner and both of these units had no problem at all running the floor standing air conditioner that I have in my bus. So I don't think that's going to be a very interesting test. They both passed no problem. So we'll start by looking at the Predator 4375. Now this one you can get with a coupon for around $360 or so which is a lot of power for not a lot of money, that's for sure. Now this has a round 15 amp plug. This has two gangs of GFCI outlets that are rated for 15 amps each, and they have a 12 volt outlet, which is just your normal cigarette lighter style. This one is rated for 3,500 running watts, and a peak of 4375. It has a very large fuel tank on it. I think it's about four and a half gallons. It comes with the steel cage wrapped around it. It does not come with the wheels and the handle that I have on the front. These you have to buy extra. It's about $30 on top of it for that kit. This thing is pretty darn heavy, especially when it's full of fuel and it does have a fuel gauge that's kind of chintzy but it does work and it uses their 212 cc six and a half horsepower motor this one is pull start and it has a manual fuel petcock to allow you to turn the fuel on and off as well as a manual choke now they claim 16 hours of runtime on this, but they do their measurement at partial load. So I wouldn't really expect to get 16 hours of actually running something. This is a pretty nice looking unit overall. And the wheel kit only took about 10 minutes to install. It's really in my mind, pretty critical to have that wheel kit because this thing is very heavy and you're not going to want to carry it. So let's look at the Predator 3500. Now like most inverter generators, this one is completely enclosed in plastic and has a sound deadening material on the inside. This one is a little bit lighter than the 4375. It holds less fuel, but it's supposed to have higher run time per gallon. I see on the front of this, it has a round plug. It has two regular 120 volt outlets. It has a different plug type for the DC output and it has a display it has a three position switch for on run and start it has the esc throttle which is the eco mode and it has a start button this one also has outlets for parallel hookups if you wanted to connect two of these together to double your output now you've already seen this one has some additional features over the 4375, such as the electric start. It also comes with wheels that are not very big, but it does roll. 
and it has a lock system to allow you to lock the wheels in place. And in addition to it having electric start, there is a pull start on the side that you can use. Now this generator does use exactly the same motor as what they use in the 4375. It's their 212 cc, six and a half horsepower engine. So the first thing we're gonna do is just start these up and we're gonna take some sound measurements at idle. Now, I don't have a professional sound meter. I do have an app on my iPad. That means that the DB readings that I get probably are not going to be correct, but they should be comparable with each other. Harbor Freight touts their 3500 as being a super quiet generator, and they do not make that claim on the 4375. So with that said, let's go ahead and start up the 4375. Now I went ahead and ran this just a few minutes ago so that we wouldn't have to wait for it to warm up. So I expect it should start right up on the first pull and get right to it. Again, this one does not have any sort of eco mode on it that would lower it to make it any quieter than it is right now. So this is as quiet as it gets, it can only get louder. Okay, I've made a little bit of shade here so that you can see the screen. And the app on the iPad is showing 80, 81 decibels. definitely can't hear anything else over the sound of the generator so there's no outside noises that are making that go up so let's go ahead and we're gonna plug something in and see what that changes So I went ahead and grabbed an old 2x4 and I've got my circular saw, a table saw rather, set up. And I've got the blade up and this thing has a pretty good spike when it first turns on. So first thing is to see if it even comes on. So that came right up. The generator did get a little bit louder when I turned it on. But it seemed to have no problem at all cutting right through that board. All right, now the next one we're going to try is the miter saw. I went ahead and put the same two by four in and strapped it down. See what happens. And that was no problem at all. Once again, the generator did get a little bit louder for a second, but it did not seem to mind that job at all. So with that said, before we get into the welder, let's have a look at the 3500. Okay, so the starting process for the 3500 is much easier. 
put it on the run position and I just ran this a few minutes ago too so it should come right up without needing to use the choke if you do need to use the choke you just turn it to the start setting for a second and you turn the ESC throttle to the off position when you're starting it and you just press the button Once the green output light is solid, then it's ready to use. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check the noise level on this. And right now the ESC throttle mode is off. So we come back over to my iPad. And you see sixty two, sixty three DB reading on this right now, which is considerably lower than the other one. Let's see what happens when we turn on the eco mode. So it seems like 60 pretty consistently is what we're getting on this. That's substantially quieter than the other one. It's pretty obvious the noise difference between these two. Now this one does have the ability to display your amp draw and your wattage draw as well. However, I won't be able to show that. So let's go ahead and try the two saws. Now we're going to leave this on eco mode unless for some reason it's not able to power the tool. going to do exactly the same cut as we did with the other generator. So first we'll see if it'll come on. As you can see, it had no problem at all running this tool. We're going to wait for the blade to stop. I'm going to turn the saw back on just so we can demonstrate that power meter. Now the, the saw is definitely making more noise than the generator. Voltage, amp draw is 6.1, VA, which is watts, is 750.
go ahead and set up the miter saw. See how this goes. And once again, no problem at all running this tool. The generator did speed up a little bit and make a little bit more noise, but it was still way less noise than the tool itself. So with that done, let me show you what I have for the welder test. So we've got the Harbor Freight Flux 125 wire feed welder, which is about the cheapest welder you can get, which doesn't mean it's useless. I'm definitely able to do some reasonable welding with it. I've taken two sections of steel that were part of the seats on my bus and cut them into sections and I've gone through and used wire wheel to clean up the connection between the two pieces as well as the edge here where I'll actually be doing the welding and we hold them nice and tight together in this vise this is not going to be the most useful weld but it's just a test of the machine And now I have to put on my welding gear. Okay, I'm pretty much set up. And we're gonna do this on the max power setting on the welder. And let me start a generator. Okay, we're starting with the 4375, as you can probably tell. And let me get my glove on. Not so easy. We're gonna go one more time a little bit. I did leave a huge gap here. call that success and we're going to try with the 3500. There's a run position and start button. It's not so easy to hit with a big glove. Once again, this is not a test of how good of a welder I am with one hand, so don't expect this to be any prettier than that last one was. There's got my gloves, the advisor, there's got one hand, and here we go. 
It is doing the weld, however, you can tell it's fairly inconsistent when I do it. It's ramping up and down. Let's try it not on eco mode and see what that changes. All right. And eco mode is probably why it turned over a few times before it started. You're definitely supposed to not start it on eco mode. All right, little interruption there, but we're putting our gear back on. And once again, we've got the Predator 3500 generator with eco mode disabled or ESC throttle mode disabled. Advisor, glove, got a phone. That was definitely an improvement. It didn't do any of that ramping up and down and it felt like the power to the welder was a lot more consistent. So both of these generators seem to do a pretty good job of powering everything that I had. The only hiccup that I saw was the Predator generator, the Predator 3500 generator, when it was in ESC throttle mode stumbled a little bit when using the welder the 4375 just ran it and the 3500 ran it just fine once i switched it off of the esc throttle mode now the predator 3500 has a fuel tank of about 2.6 gallons they claim 10 and a half hour run time from that but that's a 25 percent load the much larger fuel tank on the 4375 says up to 16 hours. And that 16 hours is from four gallons and it says at 50% load. So let's talk real quick about the differences between these in actual use. Now the obvious difference to me is the level of noise. There's no question about it. The 3500 is much, much quieter than the 4375. I would consider the way it sits that the 4375 is not something I would try and use in a recreational setting. It just makes too much noise. If you are in a situation where you're dealing with a power outage, where you're running it outside of your home, or in an emergency situation, then absolutely you can save a good amount of money by getting the 4375 but if you've got an RV or you've got a bus or a van or you want to take it camping or something like that any place that there's gonna be other people around they're gonna be pretty upset if you're running that 4375 the 3500 if you're five feet away from it you don't need to raise your voice to talk that's really the difference the 4375 you're kind of yelling over it also having the ESC throttle, the eco throttle setting on it, allows it to be a lot quieter when it's not doing a whole lot. And even when it is doing a lot, it stays much quieter than the 4375, even when the 4375 is doing absolutely no work. It's interesting because they both use the same engine. The differences are in the housing and in the RPM range that it runs at. The ability to run it off of an inverter that doesn't need to maintain a single RPM allows it to run a lot slower and ramp up as it needs to make more power instead of just 
needle spinning and spinning and spinning to maintain that 60 or so hertz that it's trying to get. And I should mention that the 3500 comes with some additional accessories. It has a plug to adapt the round plug on the front to what you would typically find on an RV. So it's a lot easier to plug it right in, whereas the four prong round plug on the 4375 is something that even with my various adapters, I don't have one that'll plug into it. So pricing wise, the list price on these, the 4375 has a list price of, I think, $399, and the 3500 has a list price of $799, which is substantially higher than you should really be paying for it in the real world. With a coupon that they always have, you can expect to save 50 or 60 bucks on the 4375 and more than 100 bucks, maybe even 150 bucks on the 3500. I've seen coupons for as low as 649 for the 3500, which is a pretty substantial discount off of the 799 list price. This one we got for I think 679 with a coupon that's current. And again, the 3500 comes with the wheels, even though they're maybe not as nice as the wheels in the add-on kit that I put on the 4375. It does come with them, it does have a wheel lock, and it is a little bit lighter, especially when you have fuel in it, because the four gallons of fuel on the 4375 really ups the weight. Now, on some other details on it, I would say that the 3500 is a better looking unit. Just having it all enclosed like that gives it a kind of a cleaner appearance. It looks a lot like the Honda inverter generators, only a little bit bigger even for a comparable size. The 4375 is nice and out in the open, but doesn't have that nice polished put together look. One thing I've seen people talk about is silencing these non-inverter style generators through various means. If you look at any other YouTube videos, you'll see that adding a muffler onto it doesn't really change anything at all. Most of the noise is not coming from the exhaust, which honestly I didn't expect. What most people tend to do is either build a box to put around it or lean various pieces of material up against it to try to deflect the noise. So we're gonna try and do that real quick and see what the difference is. All right, so what I have here is just some scrap material that I had built something out of previously and took apart. It is a piece of plywood with one inch XPS foam glued to it. And we're gonna go ahead and try it on the 4375. Now we're gonna try adding a load to it. And I have the very cheap Harbor Freight brand heat gun that is dual temperature. The high temp is supposed to be 1500 watts. So it's well within what the unit can do and doesn't make so much noise that we would really hear it over the generator. So let's start her back up. Put the material so that it's deflecting some of the noise. That's about as good as that's going to get. And we'll get a sound measure back up. Alright, and even with that piece of wood deflecting, we're still showing low 70s. Alright, with the dog removed, see it really doesn't seem to have made much of a difference at all. We're still pushing 73 or so. 
Now let's go ahead and add a load. Okay, we've got the heat gun on high. So we'll call that 75 on this. And just for grins, let's compare it without the sound barrier. Alright, so that is actually quite a bit quieter with that sound barrier according to the meter. It doesn't really sound like that big of a difference. Let's try it with the sound barrier on top. Not much difference, but a little bit. So in the interest of fairness, let's do the same thing with the other generator. All right, so here we have the 3500. And for starting it, you turn the ESC throttle off, put it on run, and press the button. is on the high setting so with this one we can look at how much power it's taking 12.6 amps just over 1500 watts so right where we expect it to be now let's go ahead and check the noise level Call that 65, 66 decibels. Let's see what happens when we turn on the ESC throttle mode. All right, and that didn't change anything because it's using more power than it could produce without ramping up to this level. So let's try propping this material up against the front. So it is a couple decibels quieter. And I'm not even going to bother putting the material on top. Now I seem to recall that I said I was going to try my circular saw on these as well. And while I don't expect it to be an issue based on the other things that it's run, for the sake of completeness, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So here's the 4375 starting up. Here we have a wonderful Harbor Freight brand circular saw 
and some more of that same 2x4. Definitely no problem there. So let's give the 3500 a shot. I keep forgetting to turn off the ESC throttle mode. Definitely starts quicker if you do it right. All right, definitely no problem doing that job. Alright, so that's all the tests I've got today and both of the generators did a good job of powering everything that I threw at it. The saws were no problem at all. The welder worked good as long as I didn't have the inverter gener generator on the eco throttle mode and the heat gun, it seemed to hardly notice it was just enough to bring the idle up on the inverter and not even enough to ramp up really very much on the non-inverter generator. So again, the big differences between these two is gonna be the price. The 300 or so dollar difference between them, you really have to decide what type of generator you want. If you have something that you want to use at a job site or in an emergency situation or something like that, I think the 4375 is a really good generator. It starts good, it puts out a lot of power, it didn't have any trouble at all even with the welder, which a lot of people will tell you you can't run a welder on a generator. But the big downfall for it is the sound. It just makes too much noise. With decibels, every three decibels, your volume level increases double. So a couple of decibels goes a long way when you're talking about 10 to 20 decibels difference. In some cases, it's really hard to make a case for using one that's that much louder. Absolutely, you can save a lot of money getting that one, but I don't know for most people if that cost savings is going to be enough to offset the volume. Now the 3500 has a couple nicer features on it. I really like the electric start. I like that it still has the pull start backup in case for some reason your battery dies or what have you. I kind of wish it had a larger fuel tank on it the specs difference of up to 16 hours compared to 10 and a half hours listed on the 3500 sounds like a pretty big deal to me especially when the 10 and a half hours on the 3500 is only at 25 percent load where the 10 and a half on the 4375 is at 50 percent load so i think having a larger fuel tank would have been a really nice feature on it but probably they didn't have any additional space in there without making the entire generator bigger. As it is, they're about the same size until you put the wheels on the wheel kit on the 4375, then it stands up a little bit taller. Weight-wise, I think they're pretty comparable when they're empty. The 4375 is definitely heavier once you fill them both up with fuel. The service intervals on them are gonna be basically the same like I've said they use exactly the same motor so the running of them is pretty comparable the oil that it takes uh, they both have I think 20 hours before your first oil change they both recommend 10w30 oil they take uh, six tenths of a quart of oil which is not a whole lot so you definitely want to make sure whichever one you get you keep up on the oil changes Now, the other thing to mention is that the 4375 has a running wattage rating of 3500, which is a full 500 watts more 
than the 3500 inverter, which is rated for 3000 running watts. Now, if you have a need that puts you over that 3500, or I'm sorry, over that 3000, then you'll have to choose a bigger generator than 3500. What I was doing was going through the biggest power draws that I have for my schoolie, and I would say the welder is probably the biggest draw by far, but the table saw and the circular saw, neither of those will operate on my power inverter because of the huge initial start burst. The heat gun does work, however, it's a really simple load, so it will just use as much juice as it can get up to that maximum. I know for my usage, if I go to pull my generator out, it's unlikely that I'm going to be in the middle of an empty field all by myself. There are going to be other people around, and the difference in noise between the two is just so substantial. The first time I started the 4375, I would say the noise level startled me as to how loud it actually was. I've used generators in the past, but they've almost all been inverter style or very small generators. This is the biggest generator I've had. But the 3500 inverter style generator doesn't make any more noise. And in fact, I've seen other reviews showing that it actually produces less noise than the uh, Honda EU2000i, which is considered by most people to be like the gold standard of gas powered inverter generators. So I've found that I'll be able to run all of the tools that I bring with me on my schoolie. So I'll be able to weld, I'll be able to cut, I'll be able to run my air conditioner, whatever I need to do without having any trouble at all with the 3500 inverter generator. And the 4375, I guess, is going back to the store this weekend. Now Harbor Freight does have a restocking fee on a generator, however they will waive that fee according to their policy. They'll waive that fee if you're returning something to get a higher end version of the same type of product. So in theory, when I return the 4375, as long as I'm buying the 3500 at the same time, they'll waive that restocking fee. One thing I would have liked to have tested is their smaller inverter generator. They have a 2000 watt that is supposed to compete directly with that Honda EU2000i that is a little bit smaller and a little bit less expensive. And I was hoping to get my hands on one of those to test out the same tools and my air conditioner, etc., to see if I could get by with less than the 3500. However, I wasn't able to get a hold of one of those for testing so I don't yet have those answers. If I run into someone in the future who, do have, who does have one, then I'll see if I can repeat these tests with that generator as well. So for now, I guess I'm going to start preparing the 4375 to be returned. In order to return it, you have to drain all the fluids out. And of course, the first thing I did was fill the fuel tank. So it's got four gallons of gas in it and you also have to drain the oil and I'll get it back in the box and get it brought back this weekend. So that's my opinion on these two generators and the bit of testing that I could do for you guys. So hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell.